Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. It's good to see you. So, I know, I know, this is becoming the uh, great girl cast, or something like that, because this is the third week in a row where I'm going to talk a little bit more about Supergirl. I can't help it, I'm excited. We're all excited, aren't we? A lot of what I'm hearing, a lot of what it seems like is the people who had problems with Man of Steel love Supergirl. And then the people who loved Man of Steel also love Supergirl, which means... That both sides of the fandom seem to love Supergirl. Although I do hear some people saying, it's dumb, the acting's bad, please take it off the air. Uh, And that's okay, everybody's welcome to their own opinion. Uh, And it did drop in ratings the second week quite a bit, which is probably expected. Um, Now we're down to, I guess, about 9 million, which is still double or triple the amount that the uh, other show on regular network television has, uh, Gotham. It gets about three-ish. And it's still on, and they they still call that a hit, or they still keep saying it's a smash, that kind of a thing. I was worried about Supergirl from the beginning because they were putting it on CBS, and the networks usually have a higher uh, amount of ratings that they expect and that they want in order to keep a show on. But as I said before, ratings have changed these days with people watching shows at different times. So we might still have a little leeway, and it's not necessarily... Time to worry because it still has, uh, as I said, double and a half or triple the amount that Gotham has, and Gotham is still on. Haven't heard anything about whether it's going to be extended or not. I think right now we're still on a 12 episode order, and the next episode coming up looks really good. I really love the last episode, I really love the first episode. People have asked me, How can you say you love it? It's two episodes in. And sometimes you have people, when, when people complain about something that they don't like that's coming up, people say, How can you say you don't like something you haven't seen it yet? So apparently you could be attacked for both things, not liking something before it's come out yet, which has always made sense to me because if you haven't seen it, how can you say you don't like it? And now if you have seen something and you say you like it, you have people saying, how can you like it? There's only been two episodes. I like what I've seen so far. Now, it could go downhill. I could begin not to like it. But right now, I like it. It's inspiring. It's uplifting. It's kind of happy. It's not overly dark, it's not overly serious, although I like all those things in a superhero movie as well, and I don't like an over-the-top, cheesy, campy thing, and we get some of that with Supergirl, but Melissa Benoist is so likable, the rest of the cast is so good, that it just kind of comes together. I like the music, I like the uniform, I like everything about the show, so far. I would rather they not do some of the cheesy things. The Callista Flockhart character not grabbing me, although I don't think it's Flockhart's fault. I think it's that's what they wanted. And for some reason, a lot of times on superhero-y type shows, they like to have that sort of that sort of unrealistic little, it's not a word, edge that makes them, you know, they go, and we go, well, listen, it is unrealistic. It's about a comic book character. It's about a girl who flies around. doesn't mean it can't still be grounded in reality. And for the most part, the Supergirl show is... But Flockhart's character is so over the top, so caustic, so rude, that that people people have said, I don't think a boss like that could ever rise to the top and be the leader of this media company. I don't know if that's true, because I've had a ton of bosses who don't seem to respect anybody and seem to think that the only person who deserves respect is the person that is at the top, or the person that is the boss, or themselves. But I'm enjoying the show, and I, I'm looking forward to what's coming up. We got Live Wire coming up. We got Red Tornado coming up to look forward to. We got we got a number of things. You know, the story developing. She's going to have this interview. I love the way she lifted Cat's car, and Cat was, oh, what the hell? Uh, it's very very cool. And in this upcoming episode, if you haven't watched the trailers and you're not going to do that sort of thing because you don't want to be spoiled in any way, that's your warning. It looks like. A certain man of steel is going to make an appearance. You know, you're not going to really see him. It's a blur kind of a thing. But maybe Kara is in trouble and maybe her cousin has to step in unless we're getting a dream sequence or something strange like that is happening. And I know people don't want, and and we can't, have the show be about Superman, but it, it helps a little on what I've said, and that is that 
it seems odd that he never steps in in her life. And I think it's very much against character that he would leave her with the Danvers uh, when she was the scared, frightened little girl with nobody and he's his only living, actual biological family. Seems out of character for Superman. Same thing happens in the comic books, and I say it. It seems like he would check in on her more. It seems like he would help her more. It seems like he would teach her more and talk to her more. And there's a few things that are a little... For the most part, they've respected Superman in this show. They don't say his name, which is... I guess a rights thing. They just call him your your man in blue, the, the big guy, your cousin, him, uh, that guy, that other hero, you know, Metropolis's guy. Um, but is that in the last episode, Kara said, "I don't want to be a hero like him." Uh, he goes it alone. I want friends around me. I want, which is kind of a slight. And from her point of view, it seems like a very negative thing to say. And also. What about Batman? What about the Justice League? What about other people he has worked with? Are we to assume then that they don't exist in this universe? But my point is, Superman doesn't necessarily always work alone. I mean, he, he's a lone hero in general, but he has had partners. He has worked with other people. He has done things in groups. So eh, just be careful with that. And something else that I have seen in almost every interpretation of Superman is when the Kryptonian bad guy strolls over the human that's been hurt and says, Ah, oh, yes! Humans are so weak, so frail. You mean like Kryptonians? Because Kryptonians, at least these days and for the last 50 years, only get their powers when they come to Earth. And when they're not on Earth, when they're on Krypton, they're pretty humanish. They bleed, uh, they don't fly around, and they're not super strong. So for the guy, or girl in this case, it was Astra, to say that, it's kind of... And I... You know, people said, I kind of chalk it up to bad guy arrogance, that sort of thing. But they're still not, they shouldn't suddenly turn into idiots or forget the fact that five minutes ago, before they got here, they didn't have any powers either and they were the same way. So that's kind of a dumb thing that they do. I think writers think that it sounds cool when bad guys say things like that, which would be fine if it was the guy from the first episode or if it was the Helgramite who, who uh, weren't and had superpowers already and, and were stronger than humans and stronger than Kryptonians in general. Thanks everybody for watching and remember, always look up in the sky.